Hakan Olson of Beamer Smart Home based in Washington. Thank you very much for joining again uh, to, to talk about stealth acoustics implementation as part of uh, your company's integration projects. Hakan, thanks, thanks a lot. I know you have a couple of very interesting and, and it sounds to me some pretty different applications that you were able to install stealth acoustics speakers uh, within you know, an audio, a full audio system, obviously uh, attached to amplifiers and, and other, um, other components. So let's talk about this first one that you mentioned telling me about. Um, it was one that uh, you worked with, I, I guess it was Brian Azano at Stealth. Yes, yeah, and yeah, thanks was, for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, so it was involved, yeah. it involved using, uh, you guys were working with the architect and builder, uh, using plaster instead of traditional instead of traditional mudding. So let's talk first about the uh, how that project came about and what was sort of the size and scope that you were tasked with. Yeah, so some of our higher end projects that we get uh, typically come from uh, high end uh, architects or builders in the area here, and. Uh, uh, what we run into here over the last 18 months is that some of those projects, they use plaster instead of traditional mud on the walls. And uh, what we have learned over the uh, last 12 months is that uh, plaster is not plaster. <laughs> there's, there's literally a, a myriad of different types of plaster. And some plasters you paint on top of them, but uh, most plaster you actually use the pigment of the plaster itself uh, so there is no paint on top of it. Some of them are not flexible at all, uh, and some of them are more flexible. Uh, and this triggered us uh, to get, get into a whole never, another level of uh, due diligence before we took on the stealth uh, speaker projects. So you had mostly been doing traditional mudding, uh, similar to uh, the installation that you had gone over with me uh, before this, which was basically in your own sh your own home uh, when you had reconfigured your home theater and gone through that process. And most of your projects are pretty conventional implementations of stealth acoustics. So how did you start to learn about working with plaster and some other materials that we'll get to uh, when we talk about the next project? Yeah, we have done a lot of projects where uh, it's traditional um, uh, uh, where there, there's traditional walls with mud on top. And there's certainly a lot of best practices uh, around that as well. And a key element to get a traditional installation done is to have a really good uh, sheet dropping company that uh, have skilled per, uh, personnel to do the mudding. Uh, but when it comes to the products that we've done, as I mentioned with plaster, uh, that is driven by the end customers and the architects desire to get the look and feel of plaster. So uh, the first one product we took on, I actually reached out to Brian Azano and say, hey, do you have any best practices? And he kind of said, said the same thing. Uh, there's a lot of different types of plaster. So let's do our due diligence. Uh, and, and sure. it's so, what, so what exactly yeah. did that involve? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's from two perspectives. One is the structural integrity, meaning that you can't have the plaster start cracking. Uh, if it's completely uh, unflexible plaster, it may crack once you start uh, uh, playing loud music th uh, through the plaster, right? So what we uh, decided to do, and where uh, Brian and Stealth uh, partnered with us, uh, which I really appreciate, is that we did uh, built a segment of a wall, a five by five foot segment, where we put uh, a, uh, a test speaker in, and then we uh, met up with the builder and the plaster company and talked about different ways of, uh, of uh, approaching the, uh, the installation. And, uh, and then did a test installation and ran music through that speaker for four weeks in various types of music, uh, just to make sure that it structurally was sound. There's a few uh, key learnings there. And the number one thing is that all plaster actually needs a mesh in order to adhere to the surface on, on a traditional wallboard that mesh cannot go on top of the stealth speaker. So you have to cut out the mesh. And then it comes uh, to, uh, down to, will the plaster that they use adhere to that surface or not? 
uh, of the, the surface of the stealth speaker? And in some cases, the answer is yes, and in other cases, it's no. <laughs> uh, so if it's a yes, then, uh, which it was for one other project, what we uh, ended up doing there, and that's, that is for the other aspect, is what impact will it have on the sound once you have uh, applied that plaster? So, so what we the did plaster and the speaker grill were basically like adjacent and touching each other. Uh, so the the wall boards are installed in line with the speaker, ju ju just like a, a traditional mud application. Okay, but these then, are for in these are for in wall, not in ceiling, right? In this application, uh, either or, either actually uh, okay. the same, yeah. But for plaster to adhere on a wall or ceiling, you need to have this, uh, it's a blue mesh. And I have pictures of that as well I can share with you. Uh, but that mesh cannot go on top of the surface of the speaker because that would kill, kill the audio performance. So, but in uh, what we found in one of these installations is that the plaster that was used on that specific pro product was adhering to the surface of the stealth speaker. So what we did then was that we did the install and then before they applied the plaster, we did a uh, measurement of the of the f frequency spectrum on, on that speaker. Uh, so we me measured it and see, see what the to see what the frequency response was. And then the company applied the plaster and we played uh, music through it for several days. And then we did another measurement to see uh, the before and after effect of the plaster. And it was pretty significant. So what we did then was that we used the audio control amplifiers that have a built-in DSP, where we were able to adjust the frequency response to be in line with what it was before the plaster. Was that uh, that test segment that you were talking about, or was this after you had done the test segment? Or this this is. This is all system. with the uh, all all with the test segment. Okay, okay. So that's why you were saying that you needed to run it for so long and then see kind of the before and after effects. Yeah. So that was the first step, and after that we concluded, yeah, it's possible. But in some frequencies, we had to adjust uh, five dB uh, up uh, to to get uh, in line with the frequency responses before. Um, and 5 dB is kind of the maximum that you want to do. Otherwise, you're going to uh, possibly start to uh, hurt the speaker, especially if sure. you're playing loud. So, the, so that was the first step. And the second step was then that uh, on that project, we in then installed four LRX, actually it was six, six LRX uh, 83s on an outdoor patio area in the ceilings where they then apply this plaster. And we follow the same uh, logic in that we measure the frequency response before and after, and then did the DSP adjustments. And it worked out great, actually. So was there an, was there an in, indoor um, installation as part of this uh, the scope of this project as well, or is this was just outdoor? No, so this uh, specific product has the six exterior speakers in a uh, covered patio, but uh, they also have 28 of the LRX 83s throughout the home, and then a Atmos theater where there's a mix of LRX 83s and LR6s. Okay, so for the rest of the, for the interior, was that not plaster or it was as well? The theater is traditional mud, but the rest of the house is uh, it's a different type of plaster. So, so, okay. uh, so but you were it, working it, with the te the test segment was kind of going to be sort of going over the whole distributed the distributed audio system. Yeah, correct. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and that was one product. Another product was similar in that uh, the customers actually completely fell in love with the LRX 85s that we have in the theater now. So that's what they wanted to have for their big open uh, 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 kitchen, living room and TV and patio area. And they also use plaster, but it's a different type of plaster that is actually gonna be painted on top of it. So they use the plaster mo mostly for the uh, the, the way the plaster looks, which is different than mud. And then it's gonna be painted on top. That plaster did not adhere to the surface of the, of the speaker. Uh, but what we were able to figure out together with the plaster company was that they were able to uh, blend in mud on top of the speaker to go slightly on top of the plaster and then have their craftsmen 
uh, emulate the, the structure of the plaster uh, on the mud, which is very labor intensive, but they were able to do it. So, uh, and the reason we took, it, were able to take that approach was the fact that they were actually painting, uh, gonna paint afterwards. Right, but and you've dealt that, with that before, yeah. where obviously one of the um, nice things about invisible speakers is that ability to, you know, completely blend it in, hide it, paint over it, do whatever you want with it. Yeah, and and the anomaly here, and what we what we have been working over the last eighteen months is is the the plaster that you don't paint, and if you don't paint and you want to have the plaster on top of it, well, uh, it's so far we've been able to solve for it. Um, but in some cases, we, we may end up in a situation where, where we can't do it, but so far, so good. <laughs> sure, so are, are there any aspects about the, the stealth speakers there that you know, make them particularly adaptable when you have to you know, encounter situations like this where it is not traditional mudding over? Well, what makes them adaptable is uh, stealth's uh, willingness to uh, to uh, to help uh, figure out solutions. And uh, not only Brian, but his whole, whole team is uh, they're very creative and they are always behind us and, and uh, uh, helping us to figure out how to solve for things. So, so in terms of that test segment that you guys had done, um, you know, what was that like in terms of? It, it sounds like it was almost. Uh, you know, you're really putting it through the rigors where you just, you know, cranking the the, vol the system up to reference levels. Um, you know, what else did you have to do there to kind of ensure that, okay, this is 100% good to go. We're confident that we can go in and, you know, actually go into the house. Uh, and like you said on the, the, you know, the exterior project as well, but have confidence that, you know, you'd be able to do the installation and have, have things work out. Um, as if it were just another material that you were working on? So I would say two things. The first thing is that the builder, architect and mudding company needs to be 100% on board and that they stand behind it once they are done because we as a technology integrator can't be on point in case it starts to crack, right? So that's the number one thing. As an installer and integrator, you need to have those as partners and that they agree that yes this is something that we can do and we will stand behind because if you don't i wouldn't recommend doing it actually for any type of stealth installations it's very important to have the, the, them as partner for plaster specifically uh, it does change the characteristics of the sound slightly compared to mud and it's important that the end customer hears the end result uh, and that they are fine with it in, uh, in our cases to date with plaster, the customers have been more, more uh, uh, concerned about the look since they are doing plaster <laughs> and less uh, concerned about the have the absolute perfect sound. Uh, for trained ears, you can hear the difference, but for these customers, and actually in these cases, they have been older customers that where they're hearing it may not be 100% and they actually could, could not hear a difference. So, but those, those are the two things. Make sure, sure. that your, uh, or, yeah, architecture, uh, the, your, your uh, architect friends and builder and plastic companies are on board and then that the end customer is happy with the end result. The biggest challenge and what where we have had to <laughs> massage ourselves through is uh, to get the builders and the plaster companies to agree to move forward because actually in all cases they have said, no, you can't do it. That was the first response because they don't necessarily want to do it. Uh, but then as you, if when you meet in person as opposed to over email or, or phone, it is, uh, it is easier to talk them through of how to possibly make it work. And then when you show them that you are concerned about the look and feel and make sure that it needs to be structurally uh, sound, that's when they have, have turned around and say, okay, let's try this. <laughs> right, and were there any other challenges in terms of, um, you know, say running wires or, you know, connecting to the, uh, you know, as part of a centralized uh, distributed audio system? No, that, that's all the same. Uh, the only difference is the, the need for calibration uh, when you use plaster as opposed to mud. I mean, we always calibrate with mud as well, but it's more, 
smaller adjustments that needs to be done when you use traditional mud because they are designed for traditional mud. But when you use plaster, you need to make sure that you are able to calibrate it correct uh, to a reasonable level afterwards and that the end customer is going to be happy with it. Sure. And I know, you know, working, partnering with uh, audio control, which I know you, you use them a lot on your installations that they, they kind of specialize in the DSPs. And obviously that, uh, that certainly helps. Uh, let's go talk about the, the, the custom cabinet installation as well. Uh, that was another, another project. It sounded like what it has distributed audio, a listening area and a 5.1 room. Um, and was it the 5.1 room where they wanted, or they had already built in cabinets that they wanted to use or did you work with a cabinet maker as well on that project? Yeah, they, this house actually came in as a referral from uh, Stealth because the end customer reached out to Stealth directly because this end customer is a guy that really loves good sound. He had been at some retail stores in the area and listened to other flat panel speakers and he was not happy how they sounded. So he reached out to Stealth and they sent him to us uh, and when he came to our showroom, he was just going to have two or maybe four uh, invisible speakers in the kitchen and living room area. Now, after we took him through our area uh, on the main floor where we have the good, better, best selves, as well as the theater, he actually decided to do, he loved, he said, this is like night and day compared to other <laughs> invisible speakers I've heard. And yes, I want these and I want the best ones. So he ended up getting 16 of the LRX 83s in four different rooms around his house. Uh, now, in addition to that, uh, we also showed him the Eric Clapton <laughs> piece that I talked to on our previous segment uh, with the acoustical guitar and he loves acoustical music as well. Uh, and we play that through the LRX 85s and he was absolutely blown away. So he decided to do a music listening area in uh, his living room with the LRX 85s installed next to the fireplace. So kind of a stereo, just in a stereo pair, basically? Yeah, uh, to, uh, and uh, we are actually supplementing that with an invisible uh, power pipe James subwoofer installed under the floor that just vents through what looks like a heat vent. Okay. Uh, so for and, most most of that installation then were most was most of it traditionally installed and then tell me about the the cabinets and where where yeah, that so, part of it and how that yeah, ended up being that way. Yeah. So since the customer uh, absolutely fell in love with the uh, uh, audio characteristics of the stealths, he ended up deciding to use stealths also for his TV area where he has a 5.1 surround uh, setup. Now the front there, you, you would not need to use stealths because it's uh, uh, custom built cabinets with a custom made grill in front. Uh, so the speakers are hidden in the cabinet. But because he liked the char characteristics of the sound so much from stealth and also this is in an open area that goes into the kitchen and living room. He decided to uh, use stealth to also have a, uh, a voice coil matching for when he play music also in this area. So, okay, so, so in the, terms of that installation, how many, so there are uh, two speakers that are concealed in the cabinetry and then are those are, those are matched and blended in with the, with the surrounds basically? Yeah, so that area has three speakers in, in the cabinet, so uh, left, okay. center, uh, right. And then that is supplemented with the uh, uh, LRX3s in the ceiling above you for surround. And then again, uh, invisible James subwoofer in, uh, uh, under the floor to su supplement or get the base out. Gotcha. Okay, so clearly he loved these the, the cabinetry and wanted to use them, uh, use it to hide the speakers. So tell me what was involved there in terms of anything special that you had to take under consideration um, to match to match the sound to how he wanted it to optimize it, um, you know, so that there really wasn't much compromise, even though it was clearly a bit different than a traditional stealth installation. So there are two things on this product uh, when it comes to the 5.1 setup for his TV area. 
uh, it was a lot of collaboration with the uh, cabinet maker to make sure that they uh, put the sub framing inside the cabinet to work with the back boxes and the way you mount a stale speaker. Uh, but but uh, with that being said, it was fairly straightforward. The other aspect was the grills that sit in front, uh, because those grills needs to be designed so that they don't interfere with the sound. So we actually had the cabinet maker build a, a, a uh, one of those grills, and we brought it over to our showroom to both listen and to measure if it had any impact. And it actually didn't. It was completely seamless. Uh, this audio was completely seamless through that grill. And what material is the grill? Is it uh, is it a fabric material? No, it's a it's a wood, uh, a wood with uh, cutouts, uh, vertical cutouts uh, through throughout the grill. So the the audio goes comes through uh, that grill it's, uh, completely seamlessly, actually. OK, so you were working on this at the same time the cabinets were being were being built for this project? They yes. Weren't already... Okay. Yeah, Perfect. in so parallel. Tell me a little bit then about that back and forth with the, the cabinet maker. And like you said, you were you were testing them. Um, it sounded like you might not have needed quite as long as as testing with the with the plaster. But was, did anything surprise you other than maybe that you didn't have to do as much uh, to accommodate for those those grills? Yeah, the first thing that surprised me was that the, the grill with the vertical cutouts, which is wood, uh, that it had no impact on the sound whatsoever. When I listened to my reference materials, as well as when I measured the frequency response, there was no, no difference whatsoever be before and after. <laughs> uh, so that was the first thing that surprised me. Uh, secondly, to your other question, uh, going back and forth with the cabinet banker, it was actually fairly straightforward. We sent them the uh, architectural drawings that Stealth has on their website for the LRX 83s the, and the back box, the BX22, uh, uh, which shows exactly what the opening needs to uh, look like and, and how to mount it. And then they built that subframe inside that cabinet opening. And then they actually created the magnetic uh, uh, um, magnetic solution for attaching the, the grills in front of it. That sounds very uh, neat. And so did the structure in the interior structure of the cabinet for them to work with, it was basically almost like working within a wall where you just kind of gave them all the measurements that they needed and they kind of took it and ran yeah. with it from there? Yeah. Again, it's uh, important to have great uh, uh, builder and uh, uh, craftsman partners to work with. So, sure. And how yeah. can how about in terms of matching those front speakers then up to the surrounds and then integrating the the James subwoofer as well? Um, how difficult was that, or was that just kind of uh, fall into the you know the ways that you typically calibrate a system? Uh, just like any other system, uh, the front speakers uh, are the same type, the LRX 83s, as the uh, speakers we have in the ceiling. So they are exactly the same. So it's very straightforward to calibrate. With that being said, uh, we are using Audio Controls X9 preamp for this project, where uh, we use direct lives um, uh, calibration and uh, tuning system, which is, I think, is state of the art it's uh, so great how you can go in and do minute adjustments yourself uh, in addition to having the automated uh, uh, calibration uh, the one thing that we have uh, um, experimented with is the crossover frequencies uh, from the james subwoofer and the stealth, uh, stealth lrx 83s and it depends a little bit on the on the acoustics and the size of the room or where we put it but uh uh, for this project, we ended up setting that at uh, 110 hertz and that, uh, with a, a, a nice uh, switchover so that they complement each other. And it sounds, sounds great. absolutely and fantastic. So in, in all these uh, instances that you've talked about today, then um, tell me a little bit about the customer's res response. Everything is kind of in place already and, they, and uh, the customers have heard the systems and are living with the systems. Yes and no. The well, yes, or they love, love what they have so far. <laughs> uh, the main area with the five point one and the built-in speakers—that's all done. Uh, uh, the living room with the LRX eighty fives. 
we're actually waiting for the audio control CM uh, uh, CM amplifier to be released to us. It's actually in production right now, so that is not up and running yet. We and the, uh, the you know the LRX eighty five speaker is a two panel speaker, so one panel for the bass and lower mid range, and a, another smaller panel for the treble and the higher mid range. And we uh, for this installation we bi wired those, so we have uh, one channel for each panel. So we're going to use the four channel CM uh, amplifier from audio control where there's built in DSPs for each of those panels. So we're waiting for that uh, amplifier to be delivered and then uh, yeah we can't wait to hear that. Great and in terms of the 5.1 what uh, what the customers heard there I imagine they are pretty happy with. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they, they just love it. And how it then, since it's in an open area with the kitchen living room, how the sound characteristics of that area seamlessly blends with the with the rest of the area that have uh, the uh, built-in LRX 3s. Great. Well, Hawken, thank you very much for going over these projects. It's, uh, I think, some very good uh, tips for installers. And like you said, especially fostering and you know, just more good reasons to foster some good relationships with tradespeople and really come up with some creative solutions in terms of uh, you know audio installations. There's a lot more a lot more out there probably that uh, the integrators like you are dealing with these days. Yeah, our pleasure. And you know we received a uh, home theater association uh, certification a few months ago, and that was actually uh, as a uh, suggestion or tip from Self Acoustics. And I think. The, if anything, and a recommendation to installers for stealth acoustics, it's due diligence. Do your due diligence upfront uh, uh, from a structural, but also from an audio performance perspective. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's one of the reasons why we earned the certification. Uh, but it's also so important for uh, to do that due diligence upfront, so you don't have to deal with issues afterwards.